So why do some people hate Mac so much? And is it justified? Let's talk about it. Okay, welcome back. Now, I have over 600 videos, I think, getting up there of all the things I love about Macs, but the reality of the situation is, Mac does some things wrong, Apple computers are, they have some flaws for sure, and we're gonna address those flaws in this video. Now, I'm also gonna follow, follow that, all that stuff up with some of the justifications I think that can maybe, they're not as bad of flaws as people make them out to be, because I'm gonna give some justification for them. But overall, I'm going to address them, I'm gonna be honest, and I'm gonna say these are the flaws that I can find on Macs, and they need to do better here. So without further ado, you know, without further ado, let's get into the video, and it's gonna be kind of a, here's the flaw, here's my kind of response, and then I'm gonna go through, I think, five or six different flaws. Let's get into it. All right, the number one reason I think people hate them so much is just because they're so expensive, all right? Number one. So Macs are expensive, let's just be honest. Now Macs are, they, they, we'll take a step back in a couple seconds and we'll say they don't have to be, but they are. When I was younger, I was one of the people, you know, that thought you have to be crazy to spend two to three to four thousand dollars on a Mac computer. You have to be Looney Tune, right? And I thought for sure, these, these people are crazy. Why are they doing this? Well, as I got older and I have a little bit more money to buy one, I tried one out. I'm so glad I did because it really changed who I am. I love doing, I mean, I'm not the best video editor let's just be honest but I love making my channel I love doing you know creative stuff so it just really changed how I use the computer now that's not for everybody I mean if PCs are for Windows PCs are for you get a Windows PC for me though it worked really well so it was worth the cost there now what I'm saying though is it doesn't have to be that expensive right the M1 MacBook Air is sitting right here the base model is 750 you can get the 499 um, Mac mini over there M2 Mac mini for 499 bucks these are not expensive machines, especially with the power that they have. You can upgrade this to 16 gigs of RAM and keep it around a thousand bucks. Now, if you compare that to a Windows you know, laptop, they're gonna be very comparable. So you can argue that, all right? I mean, but I don't think the starting point is that expensive. There's a huge thing of used computers as well. That's not expensive. You can get into that realm as well. So without even talking about that. So there are the, you know, there's gonna be computers that are gonna be a lot more though. Let's just talk about the computers that are between two and 5,000 bucks. Those are expensive for sure. Those are a lot of Apple computers, but a lot of people don't buy those. A lot of people buy the, the base units plus one or two iterations up, like adding a little bit of RAM, adding a little bit of storage, and that's it. Maybe they spend up to around 2,000 bucks, I think is the average, but most people aren't buying those $5,000 systems. And I, and I admit it, I mean, those things are super expensive and you need to have justification, a need. You need to be making money back on that. If you're just buying it because you have a small, tiny little YouTube channel, you're not that smart. I mean, don't do it. Buy what you know. Buy what you need, but just don't waste your money on things like that. So they are expensive. But the one thing too with the expensive, let's say you have to get a two two thousand, three thousand, four thousand dollar computer. Max, they have huge resale values of about 60% after three to four years versus Windows PCs that are basically 33%. So that's real money coming back to you when you sell them or when you upgrade them. So you gotta factor that in as well, which makes them a little bit less expensive. But the one thing that we all have to say is just a complete failure by Apple is the cost of upgrading from eight to 16 gigs of RAM, 200 bucks or going from 256 to 512 SSD, 200 bucks. It needs to be 100 bucks or less. We can all address that. It's just a cash cow for Apple. I don't think they're gonna change it and they should also start with 12 or 16 gigs of RAM on the base models, they don't do that. Overall though, I think that, you know, I'm not gonna sugarcoat that. That's a big fail there from Apple. I think they would have a lot more people coming on board if they actually changed that, but it's something I don't see happening anytime soon, so I'm gonna count that as definitely a fail. But at the end of the day, again, like I said, the base models plus one iteration up, buying used, they don't have to always be expensive and you get the resale value. So I'm arguing a little bit there. I'm not gonna go against it, but I'm just saying you can justify it a little bit when you look at all the factors. All right, the second big one that I hear a lot of people say, and I'm gonna say it's true, is the upgradability of Macs now on the M series chip ones, and also, you know, the, the repairability, I guess, also. So they're gonna be expensive to repair, there's no doubt about them. Now, a lot of Windows uh, laptops and stuff, they give you the ability to upgrade RAM and upgrade SSD. Now, a statistic I read recently was, even though most people buy, the, and let's say they buy a Windows uh, laptop, and they have that expandability, they actually don't use it. So only about 25% of people actually upgrade those systems because number one, they don't know how, or number two, they just they buy what they need initially and then the system gets slow enough where they just buy a new one after three or four years. They don't upgrade it. They don't see the value in doing that. So it's only a small part of people that actually use that. Even with that said, it would be nice to have for sure, obviously, if you could upgrade a Mac, but it's not coming back. In fact, on a lot of the Windows systems, it's going away as well. They're soldering things on on the more expensive Windows systems. So I think it's overall in the industry going that direction. Um, you know, it's not a good thing, I'll admit. You know, it, it, being able to upgrade would be better. So I can sugarcoat that as well. So that's a flaw too. 
All right, so, and, and part of this is the, how expensive they are to repair, all right? You have to buy that extended warranty, um, you know, Apple Care, that's more money. And if something goes wrong on them, then you're gonna be in some trouble if you're spending two or 3,000 bucks, right? Now, Apple's have had, you know, they've had some problems with the keyboards and screens in the past. We're not gonna sugarcoat that as well. But these new M series chips in, in the keyboards and everything else have been really, really good. Now, from my experience, even, you know, just saying that, from my own experience, I have a, let me just think about it here, I have a 2012 Mac Mini over there, I don't think 14 years old, I've had two 2011 iMacs back there, what is that, 14 or 15 years old, I have a 2014 MacBook Air here, I have a 2015 MacBook Pro here, I have all these old systems that I've bought and they've all worked flawless, they work, you know, I've never had a problem with any of these systems, keyboard, screens, nothing, I've had a really good experience. Now I'm not saying that, I know people, some people haven't, right? There are situations where people get into some trouble, they don't have the Apple Care. it costs a lot of money to repair these things and that's a negative because you can't do it yourself and it's very difficult in a lot of cases but the positive there again is that it's all integrated into one system so if you do go to Apple they can usually diagnose and fix the problem for a cost versus a lot of times laptops that are made from Windows you know Windows system laptops and stuff they have a lot of different parts from all different manufacturers people point fingers at what's the actual problem you run into more problems trying to figure it out you got to do your own research if you're not tech savvy you probably can't do it anyway but it would be better if it was cheaper, obviously, and you could get in there and do it yourself. But again, at the end of the day, these systems, even these old systems, still perform so good now. I mean, after, what, 10, 15 years? It's actually pretty incredible. So, you know, you can get lucky with some of them, maybe not with others, but I think overall, it's a net positive. All right, this next argument was more common, I think, a couple years ago than it is now. But people say that, you know, the Mac ecosystem doesn't have as much software as Windows does. And, and that's true, right? I mean, eight or nine years ago, it was very limited. You could barely do a lot of stuff with it. Um, very specific programs. But I think that's changed a lot. I mean, you could run Windows on a Mac and you can't run, you know, Mac on a window, you know, a Mac OS on Windows machines. So there, there's a huge advantage there. But you can run um, Office, Microsoft Office on here. You can run uh, the Adobe Suite. You can do everything you need to do on these Macs. They can do it just fine and there's a lot of you know a lot of software now available but I, I get you there's a lot of other software that may not be and that's also a negative but also a positive and let me explain so from my experience alone I think I've had about 10 times the amount of viruses on my Windows PCs and Mac or Windows laptops and PCs than I have on my Macs and now again Macs can get viruses no doubt about it I'm not saying that they can't but I think what Macs do really well is number one, the software that they actually put, they, you know, first they give it to you for free a lot of cases, like pages or like, you know, all the different things you can, you get for free numbers, things like that. So you don't have to go out and buy Office if you don't want to. But even so, the other software is through the Apple Store. It's very closely watched in a lot of cases. So when you install that stuff, you're fairly safe. With Windows, when you go out to all these different shareware sites and everything else, you run into some more problems. And I think overall, I mean, it could be a lot of reasons why you get less viruses on Macs. Maybe there's just less Macs. Obviously, less people target them. That's an argument. But overall, that's just my experience. I've had way less problems with them. But with that said, I mean, the software itself is really integrated in. It works really well on Macs. And I think in this day and age, it's not really a problem anymore. You can find any application that you need that's gonna do what you need it to do. Now there's gonna be some rogue apps out there. Let's say you're an electrical engineer that needs a very specific Windows app. Then you need a Windows machine. That's the bottom line. You just don't buy a Mac, right? But if you know that you're just a basic user, when I say basic, I mean, not even basic, I mean an advanced user, but you know that the specific tool you know, is on Mac, then I think Macs are better. That's just what I'm sticking to. So I don't think it's a huge problem anymore, but it is an argument. I mean, we have to address it. People say it, I'll admit, there's gonna be less software, but it's not always a bad thing. All right, the next one's the funniest to me, but it's people say that, you know, the huge disadvantage is Macs can't game, all right? Yeah, they can't. So, well, they can't right now, and they're not really good at it. So if you're a gamer, don't even watch this video. Don't keep watching Mac videos. Get a Windows PC. You got to get a good graphics card. It's going to cost you. You got to, you know, you got to spend up on those type of things. But they, they run games better, at least the, the top games, all right? So if you're into, like, Apple Arcade or you like the small games, Apple's, you know, computers can do them fine. The M-series chips are powerful. There's going to be a ton of graphics cores in here. They're getting better every year. In fact, in, like, think three or four years, Apple's really going after that gaming market. I think they're trying to slowly, you know, move that way with the ray tracing and stuff. So overall, I think they're going to just get better and better. But right now, yeah, I mean, if you need gaming and that's your main focus, or even one of your focuses, maybe a Mac's not right for you. I mean, instead of saying the Mac's bad for that, just understand it's not really for that. And, uh, but we have to address it. It is in the room, you know, it's something that we all have to address. So just don't get one if that's what you need. All right, and another thing I hear all the time is the limited ports, right? 
Now that's actually changing, believe it or not. If you look at it, you know, this, well, the M1 Mac has, still has the problem over here. This MacBook Air, it's got two ports, all right? Now, you can't do a ton with that. You need a dongle for some things like an SD card reader, but all the new MacBook Pros on the M series chips, uh, they all have now more ports. They got the SDR, SD card readers. They actually have HDMI on them. They have more USB Thunderbolt ports. So they're getting better, and Apple's listened to us a little bit on that. Now, these the MacBook Airs, because they're so thin and light, you know, obviously they don't have them. But the one thing that you do get with all Macs is you get really high quality ports. Let me explain. So these are Thunderbolt ports. I can plug in a 40 gigabit per second SSD enclosure that I created myself. I can get 2,800 megabytes per second on the reads and writes on an external device, an SSD. On some of my Windows systems that I have laying around here, first of all, some of them are only 10 up to 10 gigabits per second. They can only do about 800 megabytes per second um, instead of 2,800. But other ones, even the Thunderbolt ports aren't the same quality. They can get less, like 2,000. I don't know why. It's just a fact. So you get always good, high-quality ports with these things. You're going to get what you pay for. You're always going to get you know good throughput on the ports. You know what you're getting. You just know that they're always consistent, unlike a lot of different laptops out there that they're always different and stuff. These are consistent. You're going to get good ports. But there are some lack of ports, it's just getting better. All right, so, you know, these are flaws that are true, right? I've addressed a lot of the flaws with Apple. I'm not gonna sugarcoat them. But with all these different things and all these different problems, I still choose a Mac. Now, I made a video a couple of videos ago that said, why should you get a Mac? What makes them so good? And it was the sum of all their parts. They have some of the best screens, the best keyboards, the best build quality, the best of almost everything you can talk about is built into these machines. And it makes me want to buy one. It makes me want to spend my money on them. Now, I uh, you know, I have a ton of Windows laptops laying around here because I do reviews of systems. I have maybe four or five just in this room. And at the end of the day, I have a lot of tasks going on and I always at nighttime, I have a choice between a Windows laptop and my Mac right here, or one of these Macs, right? 95% of the time I pick the Mac or I pick the Apple computer, 95% of the time. I can't always justify why that is. It's not, you can't quantify that. It's just, I have a better feel with it. It makes me more happy to use it. it feels better in the hand. It's, it's, you know, you're not getting updates all the time. You know, things are snappier. I don't know what it is, but overall, I always choose the Mac. So, with all the flaws combined and all the things I just talked about, I still choose the Mac. I take my chance on some of the things with repairability. I take my chances on some of the things with not being able to upgrade them. I understand I got to buy in advance on what I need. And I just take my chance there, but I do do it kind of, you know, I take, I do some research on it. I do my best, best of the ability I can. And I haven't got burned yet. I'm sure I will eventually. Some people out there probably have. Post in the comments what I missed. Be nice. I'm trying to be nice about this. I mean, some people just hate people that like Macs and some people, I, I don't know what it is. It's just like one of these things where it's just like, you know, who knows? I, I don't know what forces people to hate each other so much. But at the end of the day, we're all just, just buy what you, buy what, you know, what's good for you. Don't worry about other people. But give me some, you know, kind of feedback as far as what I missed here. Um, but overall, I think, you know, you buy what you want to buy. I'm going to buy a Mac. I think they're a little bit better. But they definitely have flaws. Apple's dropped the ball on a couple of things, especially over the years with the bad keyboards and screens and stuff. They've done some damage in the past. They'll do some damage in the future. But compared to some other companies, I think they're up there as one of the top, and I'm sticking to it. So I'm going to wrap this up, and we'll talk to everybody soon. Have a great month coming up, Christmas and everything. Like, you know, whenever, whenever you watch this, it might be past or forward or whatever. But we'll talk to you soon. Peace.